could probably go ahead and get started. Perfect. All right, well, hello. Today, we are here to talk about GRC engineering, which you may or may not have kind of heard crop up. Uh, I'll get to a definition of what that looks like in a little bit, uh, but we're also going to be talking about automating compliance assessments as one kind of small part of using this practice and principle. So before we start off, I am Lloyd Evans, uh, the Vice President of Governance, Risk, and Compliance at a company called Acquia. We're a cybersecurity services company, uh, primarily in the uh, public and uh, we do have a commercial pra practice as well, uh, public sector. I have three dogs. I'm a Phoenix Suns fan, so this finals has been miserable. Uh, I run Ironmans in my spare time, and I really, really like coffee, especially uh, out in nature. I'm also an AWS community builder, um, and that's a little bit about me. So uh, what is GRC engineering? Uh, kind of crafted this definition. Really what this means is bringing GRC along with the DevOps movement and moving towards compliance uh, as code and in line with your actual system architecture rather than just a bunch of Excel spreadsheets that make statements about the way the world works. Uh, and the goal, uh, this is all in support of this goal the delivery of value uh, in the public sector particularly. Uh, this comes to uh, secure and compliant in addition to you know fast and reliable, which is kind of our, our collective you know reasons for here, why we work with software uh, value as we define uh, software which enables user and customer outcomes. And I'll be referring to this uh, multiple times. We'll kind of come back to this one. So I, I kind of want this one to sink in a little bit. Now, uh, we're going to zoom in for this conversation on the security or the compliance portion of security and compliant. So within the public sector, you have federal agencies, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare. Uh, you have the VA, the Department of Defense. You may have heard of FedRAMP, which is how you get a system authorized to be able to uh, provide software services throughout the, the federal government. Um, you may hear some terms like ATO, authority to operate, ongoing authorization. At the core of this uh, type of delivery comes down to NIST 853, uh, which is a control framework uh, that kind of governs whether or not uh, you're, you're able to, to uh, be authorized. And with that comes an assessment part of that process. I'm going to pause a bit here. Uh, really, all I want to point out is that a system security plan uh, kind of going towards the uh, authorizations we're talking about, roughly comprises about 80% of the workload uh, to get that authorization. And SSP, very simply put, is just a document that states how you meet all of the controls in a given control framework uh, per NIST 853. Now, why should you listen to me about any of this? Uh, I've had some positive feedback in the past. I've done this fairly well across agencies. Um, for a moderate baseline, starting to give you a little bit of an idea of what the lift looks like for this from a GRC, purely GRC perspective. Uh, for a moderate baseline system, there's about 352 controls, which break down into 782 individual line item requirements that a system needs to meet to be authorized. Uh, I've gone through this process, uh, done it really well, uh, got zero findings during uh, a most recent assessment, but I do want to kind of point to some of the numbers here of like the, the time and effort that it takes to be able to do something like this at this level. Uh, we developed my most previous SSP and uh, authorization for the entire platform, including documentation, uh, with a, a core team of four security uh, folks working really close with four engineers who are act doing the actual platform as a service development. Uh, if I didn't mention, this is for a platform as a service uh, that we uh, developed for the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services. And then it took us, uh, these timelines uh, to be able to move through this. Now, granted, this is all in line with the actual time it takes to develop the platform, which, you know, it, if that was two months, we probably uh, could have compressed this. Uh, but every time, every, uh, I guess, like time and effort that we spent doing this also took away from developers and development time towards the platform. Now, moving into the control framework. So this is what a visual of NIST 853 looks like for a moderate system. It's a visualization of the numbers that I kind of mentioned earlier. It's NIST 853 is broken down into 20 control families, everything from access control to supply chain risk management. Uh, and every single one of these cells is an individual control that needs to be met by your system. Now, this could be anything from how you do identity management to how you uh, check your personnel to make sure that they're you know authorized and qualified to be working on your systems. 
and this, what each one of these cells look like, breaks down into this. Uh, this is kind of the nuts and bolts of how an SSP is crafted, is you have a control state, or a control AU2, uh, which is audit, uh, and uh, essentially your logging uh, controls. And so, without going too deep into the weeds on this, this is essentially what it tells you to do. It's a little vague, and you write a statement in your private implementation details that says how we do this. So uh, in a system that we are crafting together called Umbreon, if you're a Pokemon fan, uh, we use CloudTrail, we use VPC flow logs in a combination with the rest of our logging stack uh, to fulfill the language that says this control. And I'm omitting a lot of things. Uh, this actually individual control has an additional 27 line item requirements that we need to add in in addition to this. I'm kind of just zeroing in on this one particular to show you a little bit under the hood of what this looks like. And now if we zoom back out, we have to do this for every single cell across this entire framework. And we have to do so uh, in uh, line with the goal, which is to be able to deliver uh, software uh, that enables user outcomes securely, uh, fast, uh, secure, and compliant uh, reliably too. I think I missed that one in there. So I just want this one to sink in a little bit of like, this is what is behind what took, you know, eight months from the start of our initial control statement writing to our first app in production. Now, uh, the secure and compliant piece very quickly uh, starts to hedge against the fast and reliable piece here. And what we start to realize is that doing all of this requires uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, both of which are in short supply when you're developing software. And our challenge becomes finding speed and reliability amidst these constraints. Because uh, for every control that the system has to be able to attest to, there also has to be the assessment portion where the, the authorizing body, uh, I guess, uh, like attests that you've actually met these controls, like you say you're, you're meeting them. And uh, breaking down into an enterprise uh, standpoint when you're looking at uh, enterprises like the VA, uh, CMS, the DOD, you can have 200 plus systems in an ecosystem, which from an assessment point of view, uh, just some back of the napkin math comes out to 156,000 controls to assess across a ATO lifecycle for an entire enterprise of 200 plus systems. And that if you have a team of 10 assessors, that breaks down into roughly uh, five and a half thousand controls that they have to assess across that uh, life cycle. And right now, the way this is all done is manual review. And so that brings us to what we're gonna be talking about today. I uh, spent a lot of time uh, in our post-lunch kind of slumber talking about the in-depths of how GRC works. I promise we're gonna get to an engineering piece uh, or else this would just be a, a GRC talk. So uh, this brings us to Audit Manager. So what is Audit Manager? Very simply put, it's a uh, it takes a control framework. The last time that I checked, Audit Manager has 29 frameworks that you can s select from. You, uh, it pairs together automated evidence collection using AWS tools such as uh, Security Hub, AWS Config. It has its own uh, API calls that it can gather data from, and then it ties that to that framework to output in a reporting function. Now, this does need to be customized, which is where we're going today. The GRC piece of GRC engineering here today, we're able to do the kind of grunt work of splicing together these config rules. Uh, AutoManager has a, a base assessment for NIST 853. We splice those to what made sense. Uh, you know, I called out earlier, we use AWS CloudTrail, VSPC flow logs. We have two config rules that we can tie to those along with anything else that we mention in our SSP. And then that brings us to a uh, very nice and pretty output of the assessment. Uh, I'm going to kind of show this from a console view because I feel like that's the best way to express this story. Uh, we created the uh, the majority of the backing of this uh, through infrastructure as code uh, working with the Audit Manager API. So you'll notice there's not the full 20 control families. Audit Manager doesn't have automated controls for, for every controller control family, uh, but it does give us a lot. And so breaking this down, what you can then do is go to your evidence folders, uh, let's say that we have two issues here for AU2, which is the control that we've written stuff about. And now instead of just saying that we do stuff and then manually reviewing this, and keep in mind, you can have a system with multiple accounts. So if you have a system with 10 accounts, you know, manually saying like, do you have VPC flow logs enabled and configured correctly in each and every account uh, across 200 plus systems, across all the controls, you can understand how uh, there would be reliability and the quality, uh, maybe discrepancies, especially as it comes down to, you know, a different assessors, uh, across your team with varied experience uh, using 
uh, an automated deployment of Audit Manager, we can now see exactly uh, what our system is uh, compliant or non-compliant to. So if we go into these two non-compliant ones, we can see that, hey, we've said we use VPC flow logs. It's not currently enabled in this account. That can now become a finding that's uh, kicked back over to the system team of saying like, hey, you say you do this, you don't really do this. This is now a finding and it's not uh, really any uh, manual review or digging into the uh, system that's uh, a part of this. And so we can also see that we have the same finding for CloudTrail, S3 data events. We said we did that. Looks like in this account we didn't, uh, but we do have CloudTrail enabled. And so, you know, we, we had a nice little green compliance check. This is a little bit of uh, just a, I think the most pretty looking snippet of some of our IAC for uh, configuring Audit Manager. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into this. The API is a little finicky, um, but we have some really smart people that have worked together uh, to, to, to be able to put this together. Um, so now we get to our outcomes of doing things this way. So going back to how Auto Manager doesn't have every single control in it, for this custom assessment, for this SSP, uh, for the platform we were working on, we got 184 out of the 782 control elements, which is a 23% control coverage. Now, that doesn't sound like a ton until you realize that about a quarter of the controls in NIST 853 are policy related. Uh, another 10% are physical infrastructure, which if you're using a cloud service provider or inherited, uh, you know, AWS is great. It's, Infrastructure secured, um, they inherit that to systems, and then 10% are like personnel and administrative, like making sure you do background checks for the people that are developing your system. Um, so with that being said, uh, for the remaining technical controls and leveraging Auto Manager, we get about a 42% reduction uh, in the manual labor that goes into assessing these things. Uh, this is all napkin math, by the way. I just, you know, going off of uh, kind of like what I see, but I, I wanted to dial it in for uh, the sake of quantifying. So now we've gone from a manual approach towards your C engineering approach, uh, manual approach from an assessor standpoint, roughly about two months of work. If we say that's 560 hours of work across that two months, we get about $33,000 uh, that it takes in paying assessors uh, for time and labor at $60 an hour. And our constraint is the time and effort and the human capacity to be able to assess systems. You know, if you have 200 plus systems, you add 50 systems more, now you need it either to add folks to your assessor team or you need to be able to decrease um, or the, the result of that is a decrease, potential decrease in quality. Uh, with a, this approach of leveraging Auto Manager, we now have a scalable assessment. We can deploy this into really any account that is within the authorization boundary. And then we've now chopped down uh, 560 hours to 313 hours, um, given the cost of running Audit Manager at about $1,000 for two months. Uh, and that comes, our new constraint is now flexible cost of running automation. Now, this is the savings that we've experienced from using this one individual tool in this one individual use case. What I would advocate from a GRC engineering approach is that you tie these things like moving application findings to the pipeline, enriching your data to surface uh, the most pressing risks, and then stitching this together with a number of other ways to kind of engineer how we do compliance uh, in our ecosystems, especially in the federal ecosystem uh, to be able to save both time, effort, and increase our speed and reliability in how we do things. So now going back to our challenge, uh, finding speed and reliability amidst these constraints, uh, leveraging this way of doing things instead of the manual review, we've saved almost 14K per assessment, uh, which going through all of that 150,000 uh, controls that we have to assess through uh, ATO lifecycle saves about 2.7 million for this uh, enterprise, this fictional enterprise. And so we now have cut down the manual re review from five uh, 1,200 controls per assessor per year down to 2,085, and that's just leveraging this approach using Audit Manager. That doesn't account other ways that we can find efficiencies in this model. And so closing out with our goal, uh, we want to deliver software. We want to deliver value. We want to do so uh, fast, reliably, securely, compliant, um, and now we can do that uh, a little bit more compliant, a little bit more uh, quicker uh, at a reduced cost, which is the key thing. So thank you. I, again, I'm Lloyd Evans. Uh, this just leads to my LinkedIn. So if you want to connect uh, here for questions, uh, please reach out. So uh, are there any questions?
That is a great question. So uh, I think Auto Manager would position itself as being able to do the entire, or be the source of truth for your entire assessment, especially when we're looking at, uh, I, I think for maybe some commercial systems that may make sense for federal agencies where there's a, a, a specific tool that's designated as the system of record for these, uh, for compliance artifacts and outputs. Um, for those manual controls, we would actually house them in there and use this as an augment, use this uh, with an output report to augment the uh, uh, I, whatever that system of record is, is uh, collecting. Hopefully that makes sense. For um, control tower organization, could you ever look at using audit manager just on the audit account as opposed to the block it off each individual account? That's a really good question. We have not. Uh, where we're at currently is figuring out what the best way to deploy this capability is in a very like similar uh, instance, whether it's uh, having uh, your kind of central security team deploying that out from either control tower or security account, whether that's working with individual teams. I think there's different answers for different organizations, but I haven't looked into that specifically yet. Thank you. Any other questions? I really blew past my time here, so thank you for, for, for bearing with. Uh, this is really fun to talk about. All right, thank you. I appreciate you all.